What I've got here today is another 10 horsepower Tecumseh engine. This thing was given to me, but you see when you try to turn the engine, it jams in. There's something broken inside the engine. You can even see on this one that the starter, some of the teeth are broken off. I do have another gear to replace that. Well, I'm kind of curious as to what's uh, broken inside that engine. Actually, I can kind of see a crack there underneath the starter. So, you know what? I'm going to start by removing the starter. Looks like the block is cracked on this one too. I'm actually going to start by removing the fuel tank. I'm going to take off these two bolts here. Okay, cut that off. All I need to do now is to remove these two bolts here. They're a Torx T30 or a 3 8 wrench. So all you need to remove is these two bolts and then it's going to slide off. And we should see if the block is cracked. Yes it is. So you can see it's in bad shape. That's the second to come say motor I get in a week with that problem. So whether it's been over revved or got low in oil, who knows. So I'm just going to strip this engine down, salvage what I can. The muffler is still in very, very good shape. They cost around $50 here. Just the 3 8 bolt up top the engine here. That holds the muffler. And then there's the two half inch bolts here to remove the muffler completely. Now on these mufflers here, you need to retract the small clip here, piece of metal that's bent over. That is to stop the bolts from getting loose on your snowblower. So you can use a hammer and a flat screwdriver. Just tap them out. Sometimes these bolts actually break in the engine. Fortunately today, they seem to be coming off pretty easy. If you find they don't want to come out, just loosen it and tighten and loosen it tighten until it works its way out. So they're fairly long bolts, about six inches. And you want to save these bolts because they're a special size. They're hard to get at a uh, fastener store. So just save them in case you need them. I'm just going to remove the governor straight from the shaft here. Just got these off. This whole assembly is going to come off. Make sure you keep the linkages in the area they were. And now I'm just going to pull on the fuel line to save it. Now when you take the coils off, you're going to notice there's two quarter inch bolts, but behind that, there's a 7 16 bolt here as well. You want to take that out. And then you can put your coil with their bolts back on these inserts. Kind of like this. Just put your bolt behind the coil. like that and just save it as is because if ever you need one of these bolts it's there together. I'm going to save the head on this engine. It's got good threads for the plug and for the muffler bolt here. So we're going to see what that piston looks like now. The piston is obviously not going to be moving because the rod's broken, but the valves are moving okay. So I'm going to save the piston, the valves, and whatever else I see can be good. 
I just took the flywheel off and you can see that the keyway on this engine is sheared right off. In one of my previous videos I take an engine like this apart with a broken connecting rod and the same thing happened. So you can see it's sheared right off. That's probably from the impact of the sudden stop. Okay, so it's time to remove the sump cover. I've got all the bolts off. They're all 3 8 heads. So I'm just going to gently tap it open. Seems to be coming off pretty easy. Very easy today, actually. So there's the inside of the sump. You can see all the metal shavings at the bottom here. Probably pieces of the connecting rod. Everything else looks good. So I'm going to peek inside the engine now. There's pieces of the connecting rod. There's a bit of shavings in the bottom there too. The cylinder still looks good. It's a bit dirty, but the block is cracked. So I'm not going to be able to keep it. I'm going to save these two valves. And that's about all that's left that is good in this engine. Then and the rings will be good, I assume. There's the rod. There's all the pieces. There's a big shard of metal from the casing. Even the camshaft seems to have a bit of a wear there. And there's the crankshaft where the connecting rod went. It's feeling a bit rough, so... I don't know how I'll make out with that, but I'll save it anyways. I'm actually going to save this block and the rod as is and the parts to keep in my shop. Just as a display. People like to see that kind of stuff, so I think I'll save this one for that. If you want to avoid this problem, don't over rev your engine too much. Make sure you've got oil in it all the time and don't work your engine too, too hard. When I say don't rev it up too high is when the actual governor speed gets out of whack. That's what's bad. But when it's adjusted right, you can use it with full throttle when you've actually got a load on the machine like blowing snow and stuff.